Now the uh, monogenic disease gene, 2,000 of them has been already known. Okay, 2,000 monogenic genes, very rare diseases. Okay, and <clears throat> but this does not uh, uh, help our uh, clinic so much. But how about the multifactorial diseases? So as for the multifactorial diseases, this is a cause of diseases. And for the monogenic dairy diseases, the, gen the genetic factor accounts almost 100%. Or well, maybe some of the environmental factors here. And on the other hand, there are totally, there's diseases that does not, the genetic factors are not affect like injuries and infectious diseases, the communicable diseases might be around here, which a little bit of genetic factors might be involved. <clears throat> we have a graduate student from Myanmar who came to my department. He studied about tuberculosis, and he found that some of the genes are, or SNPs are associated with risk for getting tuberculosis. But today, I'm going to talk about something which genetic factors plays more role in the uh, whole uh, cause of the diseases. These are multifactorial common diseases, including diabetes, hypertension, cancer, and so on. <clears throat> but still, we do not know whether the genetic factor accounts for 70%, 30%, or the environmental factor causes 70% versus 30%. That is still an ongoing uh, research, but <clears throat> we are making some progress towards that. Well, <clears throat> uh, the topic today is about metabolic syndrome here, and uh, it's, it is a cause of the atherosclerosis. Here you can see that there are deadly qualities, namely high blood pressure, high blood glucose, obesity, and hyperlipidemia which are very uh, acquired uh, symptoms. And this uh, <coughs> raises to the atherosclerosis, which also is called the silent killer. But this has almost no symptoms until all of a sudden there is a uh, severe complication or, or event called myocardial cerebral infarctions. So we have a lot of time to uh, prevent these things uh, <clears throat> while it is very silent. And our, what we want to do is to uh, ask is, can human genome information be used for better prevention? So again, here, the metabolic syndrome, this is a typical multifactorial disease, and it is, consists of environmental factors as well as genetic factors. And as for the env env environmental factors, there's uh, excessive nutrition intake, lack of exercise, sedentary uh, <clears throat> lifestyle, drinking, smoking, stress, and maybe the next uh, speaker will talk about endocrine disruptant kind of things. And also there's a genetic factors that affect central obesity, chronic inflammation, and insulin resistance. So these are all uh, physical causes that lead to abdominal obesity, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and hypertension. These are the metabolic phenotypes. And uh, the <clears throat> pathology, uh, pathophysiology underlying this is insulin resistance and low-grade chronic inflammation. Uh, the previous speaker talked about uh, epigenetics as a cause of gestational diabetes, or maybe other diabetes. And that is recently uh, <clears throat> a very big uh, novel issue called DOHAD. This is Developmental Origin of Health and Diseases, which means that <clears throat> uh, the, a baby in the uterus the, uh, is very susceptible to epigenetic changes so that that change may lead to uh, susceptibility to uh, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and things like that. So that is another uh, hypothesis now being tested. But today I will not go into this, but rather to the uh, 
genetic causes. Seafirm, caring for well-being.